Last week, OpenAI announced that they're launching a new generation of embedding models and are lowering prices again. Let's make sure we understand what's going on. The new models they announced are Text Embedding 3 Small and Text Embedding 3 Large. Okay, what is an embedding model and what's that used for? Embedding models are what actually enable information retrieval in ChatGPT and in the developer API and within retrieval augmented generation, which I'll refer to as RAG. So they're quite important. RAG is what we use when we deploy generative AI inside a specific company like CarMax or Mercedes-Benz or AT&T. It's their own private version of GPT, connected to all their own private information, not shared outside. Now, we want to be as smart as possible at retrieving exactly what our internal users need. So, let's say we put our text in here using the developer API. And let's say we're using text embedding three small in this example. So, here's the output. It's a vector. In other words, it's a list consisting of 1,536 numbers. Or, if we had used text embedding three large, it would have been more than 3,000 numbers. Okay, and then? So, now we want to retrieve something that's related to our question. These text embeddings are especially relevant if our goal is something like to summarize text or to answer a question. In other words, what people normally do with GPT. So let's say we have philosopher one who has ideas about what is beautiful and good. And we also have philosopher number two who has some ideas as well. One question might be, are their ideas similar or different? Well, if it's you or me, I guess we would just have to listen to their speeches or read what they wrote. Maybe take some notes. Maybe review our notes. And finally, get a point of view about the similarities and differences between these two guys. There's no way around it. But what about generative AI? How would a machine understand what they're talking about? Well, it starts with those embedding models that we just mentioned. We said that an embedding is a list of floating point numbers, in other words, numbers that have decimal points. And so we transform everything into those numbers. So if philosopher one and philosopher two both gave a speech at the forum yesterday, and if we want to compare those speeches to see if the ideas are similar, then we'll need to measure the distance between the two vectors. A small distance would imply that they were talking about pretty much the same thing in more or less the same way. And a bigger distance could imply that maybe they belong to opposing schools of thought. But how do we calculate those distances? You can see here that OpenAI is using cosine similarity for that, which makes sense because that's the most common method. <laughs> it's very effective and efficient. Cosine similarity scores range between zero for no similarity and one for an exact match. So what's the impact then of these new embeddings on model performance? For that, we can turn to the Massive Text Embedding Benchmark, MTEB for short. That's an open source tool on GitHub for evaluating embedding models using 130 public databases across 120 different languages and it has a public leaderboard on Hugging Face. You can see here the eight tasks 
that MTEB can evaluate and the many metrics that it's able to produce regarding performance on those. We're looking for high scores, but also models that run efficiently. Here, scores are on the y-axis, and the best scores at the top. And speed is on the x-axis, with faster speed to the right. And the size of the vector is the bubble size. So you can see that some of the top performing models are also slower and more resource hungry, which you can see from the size of the bubbles there in the upper left. So there's a trade-off we're going after. Mostly the top middle area is probably the most interesting place to be overall. You can see here that 194 different competing embedding models have been benchmarked as of today. And here's text embedding three large in fifth position with a 64.59 score, which is a great score, but of course it's large. You can see there that it's a vector that's 3072 digits long, like we said. So it's a pretty hefty tool to be swinging around. And here's text embedding three small in 16th position and a score of 62.26, which is also a great score. And that's with a much lighter payload of 1,536. Not bad at all. And we can drill down more. See over here? Those are those tasks, those eight tasks that we just talked about. So we can pick our embedding tool based upon its score on the particular kind of task that we want to do. We don't have to pick based just on the blended score. And within that, we can look even more specifically at how it performs on the kind of data that we plan to use in our business context. So let's bring this home. How much better did things maybe get for us as a result of last week's announcement if we're using OpenAI? Well, you can see here that the small version is about 2% better on the MTEB overall blended score versus the previous OpenAI embedding model. But you can also see that you get five times more tokens per dollar now. So, it's a nice little wonk in performance, together with a very significant cost reduction. So, that's the story in a nutshell. And that's something that makes it even easier for us to build a business case for implementing more enterprise class co-pilots. Thanks, and see you next time.